So uh, it's been a little while since I've put a video out and so I wanted to kind of mash up um, what I have read in March and what I plan to read in April in one video. So let's do that. So March was a very good reading month for me. Um, let's talk about it. So a couple of, uh, several self-pub books I read this month. I started off the month with Down Below Beyond by T.A. Bruno. Now, this and the next book, as I think about it, it feels like it was two months ago when I read this book. When I went over my list of the books that I read to, uh, kind of to prepare for this video, I thought, there's no way I read this book this month. It had to have been at least last month, but no, it was the first book I read this month, and I enjoyed it. It was so much fun. Um, I don't know if you can see some of the artwork in this book. It is just outstanding, and I think... Maybe some of T.A. Bruno's other books has uh, similar artwork as well. And so anyway, that just made it fun and immersive. Uh, the writing was good. The characters were good. I enjoyed them. It was, I'm trying to go back and remember now. It was, it was kind of like a um, Star Wars meets Guardians of the Galaxy type adventure. It had the feel, a very... Uh, it was a space adventure, but it was also just really fun, and I enjoyed that very much. Uh, Down Below Beyond by T.A. Bruno. I highly recommend it. Uh, it was a good palate cleanser. I'm not sure if it's a part of a series. I think it may, I know it's only one book right now. It may be a standalone, but you may can check me out on that. The next book I read, which again, I could not believe that I read this this month. It feels like, yeah, it just feels like it's been a while since I read this book. The Ice by Ryan Cahill. This is, I believe, his third novella in the Bound of the Broken series. I finished last month, I think. I finished uh, Of War and Ruin. And, of course, a big, thick book going from, I don't know, it was probably like twelve or 1,300 pages, something like that. Going from that to this short novella, but you don't really lose anything. You, you don't, the, the, the world building is still there. The great writing is still there. You spend some time with some characters that I'm, I'm particularly glad that he wrote this novella about the characters that he did because it's, I want to know more about things that's happened to them in the past and I get that. And so anyway, this is just, this was an outstanding read. Very, very quick read, just uh, not 200 pages about 180 something pages, something like that. So again, this is another highly recommended. And I, now when I finish this, I am up to date on all the Bound and the Broken books awaiting whenever we get the next book. So that's fun. Then I have been reading Shogun by James Clavell since January. I started it in January. I read um, a section in January. I read another section in February, and then I finished it off in March. Uh, I'm behind on the TV show, uh, the FX uh, show that's come out from Shogun, for Shogun, and um, I wanted to have the book read by the time I started the show, and it turns out, I really have only watched about two episodes. I do plan on going and watching more, but I just haven't yet. But anyway, this book was outstanding, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something about it. It wasn't perfect for me. Uh, it, it, it didn't... The first section that I read in January, I, I loved. It was, it was great. Then the second section I read, and much of the second section I read in February, a lot of it didn't work for me. They, they focused on... Which I understand why they did what they did. Uh, or why James Cobell did what he did. He, he wants you to see how strange the world that he's living in now that uh, the character's living in now. It's feudal Japan, and it was so foreign to him. It was so strange to him, and, and he wants to immerse you in that and for you to really feel the, the same way that his character does. And I did, and some of it I didn't enjoy. I could have used a lot less pillow talk, if you know what I mean, if you've read the book. I could have, I could have used a lot less of that. Um, so then I, the, I read the last section this month, and... It just, it was, it was, it, it went out with a bang. Uh, one of the most satisfying conclusions to a book I've read, uh, you know, sometimes people debate over how how they like the ending of books, and 
whether they feel like it should have, it could have been better this way or could have been better that way. I don't think there's any way that the ending at least could have been improved in this. It was so satisfying and so good, and I'm glad I read it. I don't know if it's going to be... Uh, sometimes I say, well, that is definitely a contender for my book of the year. I don't know that it's a contender for my book of the year. Will be a contender for my at least my top 10. But I don't know that I look for it to be in the very top part of that. So anyway, we'll see. Because one thing about this book is it has stuck with me. And I've continued to think about the story and continue, continue to think about some of the experiences of the characters. So sometimes time changes my opinion on things. So we'll see. But right now, I really enjoyed it. I'm so glad I read it. But it wasn't a perfect book for me. The next book I read is another indie uh, fantasy. And again, I am so glad I, I read this. I did a review on it on Fan Fanfatic. Uh, Stone in the Sky by Z.S. Diamante. And, and this was a very fun read. Uh, it was enjoyable in a lot of ways. This is a debut novel by Z.S. Diamante. And, um, you know, a lot of times debut novels can kind of not work for you. Maybe um, maybe you see some of the newness in the writer, if that makes sense, uh, which is fine. Everybody has to start somewhere. Well, th there were some things in this book that I thought, well, maybe this could have been improved on or this could have been improved on, but that was a small, that was only a small portion of what I thought. This was a fun and fantastic read. Um, one thing I love about it is it's a book that you can share with your family. Uh, as far as language, you don't have to <laughs> you don't have to worry about your kids reading it and, and seeing language that they probably don't need to see or you don't want them to see. Uh, no spicy scenes, anything like that. I enjoyed this so much, and I can't wait to get to book two, uh, Stone and Tide. I have it on my bookshelf right now, and I'm excited about getting to that. The next book, the last book that I read in March the last book that I completed in March. I've still got a few that I'm reading that I'll talk about. But the last book that I completed in March was, March was The Golden Fool by Robin Hobb. Um, I've heard mixed things. Your diehard Robin Hobb fans, she does no wrong. Um, others I've heard say, well, maybe this one after, after The Amazing Fool's Errand, uh, maybe this was a little too slow, maybe... Um, she gets bogged down in some things that you really didn't want to read about as far as he goes from action in book one of this trilogy, this is the Tony Man trilogy, to babysitting almost in this book. I don't really agree. Um, I fall more on the side of Robin Hobb does no wrong, at least so far. Um, I absolutely loved it. This was... Um, he spent time helping the character of Fitz to evolve so much more. Something that I appreciate about Robin Hobb's writing. A lot of people talk about how dumb decisions Fitz makes, especially in the first trilogy, uh, The Farce here. Well, he was a child, and then he was a teenager. <laughs> then he was a, just, just above a teenager, a young man who's making dumb decisions, decisions like we would make at that age and she really brought that out and then this he's a little bit older he's uh i think he's around my age around 30 between 35 and 38 somewhere in there i think he is and he he is she is exploring how he views his children and it is just wonderful to read i i, I absolutely loved the conflict that he went through internally as he's expressing wanting his child to make right decisions and not make the same decisions that he made and wants them to do better than he did. And he, there's also, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but there's also, uh, he's been separated from another child and he's he longing to be with them, longing to love them, but not, uh, to, to have a relationship with them, but at the same time, not wanting to because of possible danger for them. And it is just, I can't wait to get to the third book in this trilogy. So, again, it's an um, easy recommendation. 
All right, now I mentioned on Twitter that I was secretly reading a book. What I meant by that is I hadn't announced it on here. I haven't put it on Twitter or anything that I was particularly reading this book because I didn't plan to read this book this month, but I started it anyway. Uh, one of those mood read type things. And I haven't had the best experience with this particular author. Uh, Brandon Sanderson. Now, I know that he is beloved, and 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 I totally get why he's beloved. Uh, I, I hold I, Brandon Sanderson is important to the fantasy community. He is he is an outstanding author. Just look at the amount of books he's written and how successful he's been. So far, the books that I've read by Brandon Sanderson has not worked for me, including the most recent one that I read prior to this, which was. Uh, the second book of Mistborn, the original trilogy, uh, The Well of Ascension, I DNF'd it. Um, book one, The Final Empire was okay, but again, I felt the same I felt about his other books. They just didn't do much for me. And then I was reading The Well of Ascension, and I was just, I was bored. And I DNF'd it, and I thought, well, I think I might be done with Brandon Sanderson. But people kept telling me, don't stop yet. You have to read Stormlight Archive. You have to try The Way of Kings. That is totally different from everything else he's written. So I did. Well, I say I did. I started it. I am, I don't know, about a third of the way through it. Uh, go ahead and say what page. I am on page 360 of, I think, a 1,000 pages, a little over a 1,000 pages, and they were right. Everybody was absolutely right. I have none of the issues. None of the issues that I've had with five other Brandon Sanderson books, I've had none of those issues with this. This is fantastic, epic fantasy. It is, it is absolutely, it has absolutely drawn me in. Uh, I'm invested in the characters. I'm invested in the story like I haven't been on any other Brandon Sanderson book. I have no plans of when I'm going to finish this because uh, I've got other books I'm reading at the same time. So, um, I'm not going to push myself. I'm going to, as I, as, I, as I want to get to it, as I feel the mood to read, I'm going to read more. Um, I don't, and, and, and it's only getting better. The book so far is only getting better, so I don't see that stopping. I'm enjoying that. More to come on my feelings about that. The next book is another book that I'm completing. I'm, I'm reading. I wasn't, again, I don't think I plan on reading it this month, but John Gwynn, released the cover, showed the, the cover of the new book of, the third book of the Bloodsworn trilogy, and I haven't read any John Gwynn books yet, and so I said, I have to change that, so I thought, what am I going to do? Am I going to read Bloodsworn first, and then go back to the Faithful and the Fallen, or what am I going to do? Well, I ended up deciding, through the advice of other people, to go ahead and start with Malice, the first book of the Faithful and the Fallen, and some have said that this is the weakest of this particular series, if this is weak, then I'm going to be blown away by the rest of them because this has been an outstanding book. I have loved, I love epic fantasy. I love being pulled away into a, a high fantasy world, and this is giving me everything I want. I enjoy slower paced books. I enjoy hanging out with characters in their hometown. Uh, the the traditional tropes, chosen one trope. I, I love those things. And I am within 100 pages of finishing this book. Um, it may carry over into next month. I may finish it before. It depends on, of course, with the holiday weekend. Uh, not sure how much time I'm going to have to finish it. I'm going to try to finish it. If not, I'll definitely be finished with it in the first day or so of April. So that's why I put it on this side of the video. Next, I last year I spent a lot of time reading Stephen King. In fact, I think I read 11 Stephen King books including a few Dark Tower books that actually I've read a couple this year as well. So 11 or 12 in all, but I haven't read his first book. And of course, this year is the 50th anniversary of Carrie. Um, I think this was, I know he wrote another book probably before that he released later on, but I think this was his first published book. And so I plan on jumping into Carrie and seeing what this is all about. Uh, I'm excited about it because so far I have really enjoyed there are obviously things about Stephen King that does not work for me. Um, he can be very crude at times, to put it mildly. And I don't like that, but he's such a good storyteller that I want to read his books. And so I'm excited about reading Carrie this month. Next is a um, self-pub book that I actually received. It was an ARC that I received 
longer ago than I want to really admit. Um, I intended on reading it earlier on, but when I, when I first started reading arcs for people uh, and reading indie, indie authors, I, accept, I accepted a lot more arcs than I should have. Um, and so I haven't had all the time that I want to go back to them. But this is one that I've had for a while and I want to read, I want to get to. So I am going to read this this month. This is The Leopard and the Red River. I, I put on social media, it was right after I finished uh, Stephen King's book, The Gunslinger. And I put, I said, you know, I wish I had more Western fantasy, more fantasies in a, in a Western type world. And this author reached out to me, John Kevin McDonough. I, I'm really, not, I'm sorry about that. Uh, M-C-D-O-N-A-G-H. McDonough, McDonough, I'm, I'm not sure. Anyway, he reached out to me, said, hey, I have something like that. He sent it to me, finally going to get to it. I don't know, six, seven months later or something like that. So I look forward to reading this this month. And then to top off the month is Dune Messiah. I read Dune first thing in January. In January, I have these beautiful covers. I absolutely love these covers. Anyway, and of course people tell me, oh, if you, you know, you need to continue on at least with the first three books. And so... I plan to, and I'm at least going to read the second book, Dune Messiah. Uh, I've already read a couple of chapters uh, in it, and so far, I enjoy the beginning of this more than I enjoy the beginning of Dune itself. So I look forward to continuing on in this. Well, that's how my March went and what I plan to read in April. Of course, I may even add something to it depending on how, how my mood goes. Anyway. Uh, I look forward to this. What are you reading? What, how was your March? What's your April shaping up to be book-wise? Until next time, go read books.